Hi, in this video, we will look at standing waves. We will first look at wave superposition and traveling periodic waves, which we need to understand how standing wave is formed. And then we'll look at some examples of standing waves. First, wave superposition. This deals with what happens when two waves overlap. You know what happens when two objects overlap? Well, they collide and bounce off each other before they can overlap. With waves, something that's both more interesting and boring happens. Let me demonstrate. Using this FET simulation, I'm going to generate wave pulses. The end of this string is terminated with this ring, which is going to cause the pulses I send to reflect. Okay, now let me send two pulses, separated a little bit in time and distance, and let's see what happens. Huh, did they bounce off each other or go through each other? Actually, if we wait a little bit, we will see which it was. The rightward moving pulse was upside down before the collision which means these two pulses just passed through each other. So that's the boring thing that happens when two waves overlap. Nothing happens. They just pass through each other. But this is overly simplistic. When they overlap, they do produce shapes that are interesting. Use them adding together to make a larger pulse or canceling each other to make the string momentarily flat. We call this a superposition principle. When two waves overlap, they simply add, and beyond that, they do nothing else. This tells us how to handle it when two waves overlap. But we are not going to get a standing wave by overlapping two pulses. We need a periodic waves like this. I opened up the end so that we get a simple traveling wave, traveling from left to right. When we talk about waves, this is the mental image I want you to have. This is what we mean when we say that waves are oscillations in time and space, or that waves are disturbances that travel over space. Also watch carefully what does not travel. If you look at these beads, the beads are not moving in the direction of wave propagation. What is moving in the direction of the wave propagation is the shaking, the movement itself. This picture has only one wave, right while the traveling wave. So we don't get any interference, wave overlapping. To introduce a leftward traveling wave, we fix down the end. But the resulting shape is not what we call a standing wave. This looks quite random, and you don't see any features you recognize as a standing wave. Standing waves can only occur at fixed frequencies. Let me demonstrate what those frequencies are. The quickest way to figure out the frequency is to measure how much time it takes for a wave pulse to move from one end to the other end of the medium. All right, so that will be the period, meaning the frequency will be one divided by 1.19 or 0.84 hertz. All right, let's see what happens with this frequency. By the way, because I know what's going to happen, I'm going to reduce the amplitude quite a bit. You see a buildup of the standing wave. This is one of the resonance frequencies for this string. There is some energy stored in this string that is oscillating up and down. And at this resonance frequency, 
Each push and pull of the driver happens at the right moment to continue adding energy to this oscillation. As you look at this standing wave, I hope you notice the standing parts of the standing wave. These spots that do not move at all are called nodes. And these spots, which move the most, but whose location is not changing, are what we call antinodes, sort of opposite of nodes. Once you recognize these features of a standing wave, you can kind of see why we couldn't get a standing wave at the previous frequency. For this standing wave, we need nodes at both ends. One end is tied down, and the other end is oscillating, but not that much. And this condition, getting nodes at both ends, it does not happen at all frequencies. The special frequencies where it happens are the resonance frequencies. And at those resonance frequencies, we get the standing waves. Once we figure this out, then you can get so other frequencies that will also work. For example, this standing wave has an extra node in the middle. We could get a longer wavelength and have no node in the middle. So remembering that V equals F times lambda, if I have a wavelength longer by a factor of 2, then the frequency is smaller by a factor of 2. So let me try 0 0.42. All right, that worked out as expected. Now, you can have frequency three times this, or wavelength a third of this, and still end up with nodes at both ends. You will have two extra nodes in the middle. And at this higher frequency, um, 1.26, this is the shape of the standing wave you get. Okay, you can try out other resonance frequencies on your own if you want. I just want to show you one more thing before I go. There are two kinds of endpoints. The clamp forces a node at the end. But if I make it a ring, make it easier for the end to swing back and forth, I get an antinode instead. Watch, I'll put in a frequency that I know works. We'll have to wait a little. It's low frequency, so it takes a little bit of time for me to build up. All right, that looks like a standing wave. This is a fourth of the whole wave, wavelength, which means that the wavelength is actually four times this length. If I double the frequency to 0 0.42, I don't get a standing wave. It's because this frequency requires a node at the end. You saw that earlier. But in this setup, I can only get an antinode at this end if I'm going to get a standing wave. All right, let's uh, try tripling the frequency. So 0 0.21 times 3, 0 0.63. Then I get a standing wave again, again with the antinode at the end. This is half of a wavelength and then a quarter, so this is a three quarters of a wavelength. We won't do much with this type of standing waves, but I just want you to be aware that it is not the case that you always have a node at the end point. You can have a node or an antinode. All right. That's all we have time for now. Please let me know if there are any questions, and bye.